Hey, hey, warrior saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Christ is risen. I was watching, um, I was looking on my Google app one morning, and it gives you a lot of suggestions of news items to read about. And I saw that there was a cyber terrorist who had hijacked a pipeline on the East Coast and that we should anticipate gas shortages. A few minutes later, I was like, I'm done with Google. And I went to Facebook and I opened my Facebook feed and I saw a video that baffled me of lines of gas, like I imagine seeing from the 70s, lines at gas stations of people waiting to get gas. And they're waiting behind people who are taking the gas pumps. And this woman was filling a plastic bag from the grocery store with gas. And I was like, that's not gonna work, honey. And I watched further on the video and I saw her pick up her bag that she had placed on the floor so as to make sure she could maximize her gas um, in the bag. And gas was pouring out from the bottom. And I was like, I told you that's not going to work, honey. And then I watched a little bit longer, and she went to her car and got a second bag. Because, of course, you want, everyone knows if you go to Fry's, those bags are not very good. They're going to break. you got to double bag it. So she goes, and she gets a second bag. And I'm like, this is what things have come to. And I was giggling a little bit because I was like, that's silly, but surely that's not what's going on. And I keep scrolling and I keep seeing more and more things like this about gas. And then I, I had a thought. My chest started to feel a little bit tight. My hands started to shake a little bit. And I said to myself, I wonder how much gas I have in the car. The pipeline's on the opposite side of the country. But I was panicking. I was drawn into this panic that I have to go get gas, and I have to get it right now. And I got to make sure my wife's car is filled up with gas. And I got to make sure that maybe we have some reserves. I've got plastic bins. Clearly, that's a thing. And that works. And we need to put... Anyway, all of it is... is it sounds silly, but what struck me most of all was the panic that I started to feel. And I realized there are... So many things happening all around us, all the time, that are drawing us in to panic. And it doesn't matter what side of anything you believe. The panic is sucking us in. Businesses can't find employees. People say they can't find jobs. We've got people saying there's a cancel culture out there, which makes us think, can I say that? We've got other people saying that there is uh, uh, virtue signaling out there, which makes me wonder, well, what do I actually think? Do I belong to that? Do I not belong to that? What's my mindset? Where am I going with all of this stuff? COVID is still out there, lingering. Vaccine, no vaccine. If you have the vaccine, you can do this. If you don't have the vaccine, you can't do that. No, everyone can do everything. What is true? The panic starts to set in. The foundation is gone. We don't know where to turn. Not to mention what we always have lingering throughout our lives. The greatest panic inducer, death is everywhere, whether it's losing a loved one, whether it's knowing someone who's died, whether it be dealing with some sickness or something that we are dealing with loss of some sort in our lives all the time. There's a beautiful phrase in Italian. When someone dies, they don't say memory eternal. During the services, of course, they use things like requiescat in pace, which means rest in peace. They do all of those things liturgically. But the, the actual comfort that is given to someone when they are dealing with grief and dealing with the panic that inevitably comes along with it is this beautiful word, coraggio. Coraggio. They simply say to one another, courage. Take courage in the face of this. And it got me thinking, this is precisely how we are going to be able to leave panic behind. 
St. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians. After he sets up in chapter 1 the beginning of, of the word of the cross, the gospel of the cross, and the power of the cross, saying that the cross, which is folly for Jews, and a, scan a scandal to Jews and folly for Gentiles, in his second chapter, he starts with the words telling us, I am with you in weakness. I am walking with you and in much fear and in trembling. He goes on to end in verse 5, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men that is showing us panic everywhere. That is showing us all of these things that make us nervous, that tell us, go get gas right now but that your faith might rest in the power of God. And what is the power of God? The power of God is in the cross, which we see today in the church more than any other day of the year. And I don't mean to negate Holy Week, but today is a day that is set aside commemorating Joseph of Arimathea and the myrrh-bearing women. Two people who took courage, who left panic behind, who were able to work through what the world was telling them to do, even more so than the disciples were. We hear in today's gospel that Joseph of Arimathea, who was a nobleman, who was a member of the council, he was the in crowd for the Jews. He was it. And he took courage went to Pilate, risking the chance that he would be kicked out of the council, risking that he would be kicked out of the temple altogether. He would lose everything that he knew to be his life. And yet he took courage, went to Pilate, and asked for the body of Jesus. The myrrh-bearing women, likewise, early in the morning, they went to the tomb. They were not worried. Their biggest worry is who's going to roll away the stone. But they went anywhere. Where were the disciples? Where were his beloved? Peter, we haven't seen since he fled after the Garden of Gethsemane and then denied Christ. Why? For fear. Out of panic. Out of seeing what the mob was doing and not wanting to have that happen to him himself. But Joseph left panic behind, seeking the kingdom of God, taking courage and going to Pilate. And that's precisely what we take from today. If we ourselves want to leave panic behind and we want to take courage, then we must, first and foremost, brothers and sisters, seek the kingdom of God in everything that we're doing by living crucifixionally. And a, another way to say that is do the right thing. We all know what the right thing to do is. We know when we're confronted with a tough situation, what is the right thing to do? Are we gonna su be sucked in by the panic of what might happen, what the consequences of the right thing to do might be? Or are we going to have courage, courage enough to do the right thing, to do what is needed? Maybe there's a conversation you're avoiding because you're afraid of rocking the boat. Take courage. Go with love. S seek that conversation out crucifixionally. But go, have those conversations. Maybe there's a friend that you're estranged from. Go, make peace. Seek forgiveness and grant forgiveness. But don't expect that you're going to be told you're sorry. Go do the right thing anyway. Go, seek them out. Do what you have to do. Taking courage to seek the kingdom of God means that we do what we know is right in our gut. That we leave panic behind. Leave it at the door. Take it from our lives and we don't let us get sucked back into it. Coraggio. Christ is risen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God.